All right, UFC 293 isn't too far away. And Israel Adesanya and Sean Strickland. Well, things are starting to heat up. Listen, Israel Adesanya, first of all, shout out to that man. What an incredible workhorse, an incredible champion he's been. And so inspirational, let's be honest. I'm not kissing the man's ass, but to lose consecutively the amount of times that he did to Pereira and then go straight back in and then to knock him out, that was phenomenal. And the reality is, there's not many contenders left. Drickers Duplessis, yes, okay, he's the man. He's the number one contender, but he's injured. So that means that Sean Strickland gets his shot. And if you speak to Israel Adesanya, Sean Strickland should be thanking Izzy because Izzy made it happen. He said this week that the UFC didn't really want to give him that opportunity because Sean Strickland is an idiot. Sean Strickland has a big mouth and the UFC didn't want him embarrassing the company. As I say, Izzy his words according to what I read online not mine how much convincing did the UFC take to I guess put that one a on lot, for you a lot like I said he's an idiot and you know the UFC don't want him embarrassing the company um but yeah that's all I'll say about that so you should thank me you should really thank me for actually making him get the fight I pushed for it he knows what happened behind the scenes and I pushed for it and I'm glad that UFC trusted me to listen to me but the reality is it's going to be a great fight. Sean Strickland's no joke, okay? Listen, he does talk a lot. He does talk a lot of crap. He does say a lot of very, very controversial things, and a lot of which I do find funny, okay? But the reality is he's showing up to this one to win the fight. And as we know, through fights, he loves to talk to his opponent. And Israel Adesanya said, listen, if he starts talking to me mid-fight, then I am going to break his jaw. Simple as that. Because if he's talking, he's not focused on the fight. And if the gums are flapping and the jaw's moving and you get hit with a shot like he hit Alex Pereira with, then yeah, I'm sure the jaw will be broken. Now, of course, Israel Adesanya, other than Pereira and Jan Blahovic, the man's been perfect inside the octagon. And you could say he avenged the loss to Pereira. So right now, there's only Blahovic that has a win over him. You could make that argument, okay? But coming into this one against Strickland, he is not underestimating anything. And he even quoted my fight against Luke Rockhold. He said, listen, Bisping came in after already losing to Rockhold, took the fight on like one and a half weeks, two weeks notice, something like that. And what happened? He knocked him out cold. Because this is mixed martial arts. And that is what can happen. And if you look at the hand speed of Sean Strickland last time out against Abus Magomedov, the hands were lightning fast. And after a tough first round where he took a lot of punishment, Abus Magomedov slowed down. And then in the second round, Sean took over. And it was a beautiful combination. Then the referee stepped in and stopped the fight. Now, Sean has got a long way to travel, okay? And listen, Americans, they love their own. They're very, very patriotic and rightly so. So he's out there doing the USA, saying to me on the microphone before 1776, all that type of stuff. Fair play to him. He's a fun guy. He's a fun fighter to watch and he's got a very very underrated ground game but the thing that Sean can't do too well is wrestle and I do believe that's why we don't see Sean use the ground game too much if they hit the ground if he's taken down if they fall down whatever the case may be I know firsthand from training with Sean quite regularly back in the day when I was competing he does have a very very slick guard he's got great sweeps good submissions and he can pose some massive problems for Israel if he gets there as I say though the wrestling side of things isn't the best okay and lots of people have tried to take Izzy down lots of people have always come in with that game plan he's just a kickboxer I'm gonna take him down and I'm gonna have my way Yoel Romero Paolo Costa Robert Whittaker on two occasions they all came up short so when it comes to wrestling I don't think that should be the plan for Sean Strickland maybe if he knocks him down maybe if he's not talking and he's not getting his jaw broke maybe he can knock him down and take over but I don't know about that listen the Australians they're gonna be the shit out of Sean Strickland when I fought <laughs> this is funny when I first fought in Australia UFC 110 against Vandalay Silva there's a massive there's a massive English culture out there in Australia. Australians are basically English with better weather, better accent, and probably hotter women, okay? Don't come at me, English. It's just true. Uh, my wife's Australian. What can I say? I'm biased. Um, and I thought when I went down there to Australia that I would get cheered because I'm kind of one of their own. But oh my God, was I wrong? No, I should have known. I was fighting a legend in Vandalay Silva and they loved him, probably because he fought so long in Pride and MMA fans, you know, Australia's close to Japan. I don't know, I'm just trying to give it some logic. 
Uh, they cheered the hell out of Vanderlei and they booed me with every ounce of passion that they had. I was quite offended, let me tell you. So that's what Sean's going to uh, walk into here. He's going to walk out there to a lot of hatred, a lot of booing, and I don't think he will give a damn. Sean always shows up in extremely good shape, okay? He can always go five rounds. The man loves to spar. Sparring is one of the best things you can do to get ready for a fight. Simple as that. But these days, people don't like to spar. They don't because it's the modern way. You don't want to waste your time. The, you don't want to waste your chin. You don't want to get injured. You don't want to spar because it's going to shorten your lifespan as a fighter. But the reality is for timing, right, for power, for combinations, to get used to it, to deal with the anxiety of fighting, and to get in the best shape possible, sparring is so important because guess what? You want to get good at tennis? Play tennis. Want to get better at football? Play football. You want to get better at fighting and you want to get in shape for fighting, you need to practice fighting. Now, granted, there's people out there like Max Holloway that says, I don't spar anymore. Max Holloway has got tons of experience. He's been there forever. He was a featherweight champion for a long time. So he's done it all, okay? And he's got the experience. He's got the time. He's got the range, the speed, the reads, whatever you want to call it, okay? But you need to spar. Now, Israel Adesanya likes to spar. Sean likes to spar. They're going to get down. They're going to throw down in Sydney, Australia. And I can't wait for it. But what do you think? Do you think Sean is going to talk a lot of shit? Now, look, if you look at UFC 276, Sean Strickland loves to talk. They had a press conference there. He was fighting Alex Pereira. And even though Alex Pereira, I mean, he's got powerful hands, but he doesn't say much. Sean was directing all of his attention on Israel Adesanya. They were talking a ton of crap. He's been calling him the Chinese champion, this, that, and the other. You name it, Chinese champion, anime guy. A lot of other more controversial things that I won't say because I'll get thrown off YouTube. Tell you what, if you win this fight, when we fight, I knock you out, I'm going to do a TikTok dance over your grave. Oh, f Look at this grown-ass man on TikTok. Maybe that's the problem, bro. And the you know But Israel Adesanya went out there, beat Jared Cannonier. Sean Strickland got knocked out against Alex Pereira. Now, this is his big moment. You could say this might be his only title fight. That's why Izzy isn't underestimating him. And that's why Sean will talk a ton of shit. Because number one, it will drive the sales. And who knows? Maybe he gets a piece of the pay-per-view. Sometimes challengers do. Sometimes they don't. It depends on their contract and the negotiations. But if he does, he wants to maximize this potential. And he's going to do more interviews than you've ever seen. And there's one thing you can say about Sean Strickland. This man is not shy. He's had a very, very tough upbringing. He came on my show, told me some, on my podcast, told me some stories about his father, the way he was raised and things like that. So he's had it tough. He's had it tough and he's come up the hard way and now he's here. Good for him. He's earned this fight the good old-fashioned way. He's beaten a lot of people and it's incredible to see Sean Strickland in this position. And if you go back to 2018, he was wheel kicked by Eliseo Zaleski dos Santos. He beat Nordin Taleb and then he fell off his motorbike and he was told he was never, ever going to fight again. Came back in 2020, came up to the 185 middleweight division and went on a tear. Beat Jack Marshman, talked all the way through it, destroyed Brendan Allen. That was a big win. Christoph Jotko, you right a hole, Jack Hermanson, all while talking a ton of shit whilst he was doing it. But can he jab and jog his way to a victory against Israel Adesanya? I don't think so. Especially when things get personal. I do believe that brings out the best version of Israel Adesanya. But one thing's for damn sure, I cannot wait. That fight is a long way off. But when Israel said, I am going to break this man's jaw... I almost believe him. We'll see what happens. But what do you think? Let me know in the comment section. Subscribe and ring the bell if you haven't done so. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.